Good evening and welcome to Allen's Italy. Tonight we are going to be taking a look at the piazzas of Rome. Now I know that I've done a few shows on Rome and uh, during some of those shows we've actually taken a look at some of the piazzas that I'll be talking about tonight. But I've added uh, many, many more and um, you know I love Rome and Rome is a, is, a, is a place I've been to at least a dozen times and it just never, I never get tired of looking at the wonderful uh, pictures of the uh, streets and the piazzas and the wonderful monuments. So we're going to be looking at that a, a, a little bit again. So um, uh, that, that should be fun. Now, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about last week. I, you know, last week was a, a really wonderful experience. Uh, if you saw the show, you would you would have seen uh, me interview uh, Toby Carey and Bart Friedman, who were two of the founders of of Woodstock uh, Public Access, and uh, in, back in the early '70s, and they gave us the whole background as to what what exactly took place, and uh, it was really very enlightening and uh, and and a lot of fun uh, listening to them and talking to them, and they're wonderful guys. And I'm glad I got a chance to meet them both. And uh, I just wanted to once again um, thank them. And this was the, uh, the front um, slide for the show. And those are the people who were part of a group called uh, uh, Video Freaks, which later became Media Bus. And those were the, those were the original founders of Public Access. And uh, this is a photo taken right from the show. Uh, that's Toby on the left and Bart on the right. And this is during the discussion. I'm out of the picture to, um, to Toby's right. But, um, you know, I, 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 I've looked at that show a couple of times in the past week. It was great. And it was, you know, a really wonderful thing. And uh, I certainly wish them the best. They loved this particular picture, which they hadn't even known existed. Um, and uh, I use this to indicate once again my thanks to Bart and, and to Toby, not only for their participation on the show, but also for their work to help promote public access television in Woodstock and the Hudson Valley. So uh, once again, thank you. And I also had this slide at the very end, which was part of the closing, my closing segment. Um, you know, and, and it indicates my appreciation to uh, you know, my friend Ellen Povel, who's my uh, engineer and videographer, and was also part of those early days. I think she started in the '80s. Uh, to Nancy Kane for using her book, which is a fabulous book that I've now read three times, and uh, used photos from it. And you know, she's quite an amazing person. And you got to—I I don't want to promote the book, but I do want to say that her book, Video Days, is a, is a really wonderful. Um, autobiography of her experiences in the early days of videography. And finally, to my friend Charlie Higgins, who loaned me that book, Feast, which was written by the, the Carey family back in the early 70s on cooking, as, as Toby said, cooking for large numbers of people. So that was really fun. And to Charlie, I say thank you as well. And I, I, I keep forgetting to return the book to him, but uh, I, saw, I did see him yesterday. So, okay, so we're ready to begin. And um, this, is, um, this is a very good beginning. Um, although I'm going to save this particular piazza for later, the picture you're looking at is a picture of, taken from the very top of the Cathedral of St. Peter's in Rome, the biggest Catholic uh, uh, church in the world, cathedral in the world, and this is a piazza. This is the piazza in front of it, and it is really one of the extraordinary scenes that I, I've ever seen in in Rome. You know, the, there is the city of Rome unfolding, and you you know, if you look very very closely, you can see some of the some of the famous monuments. You can see the Victor Emmanuel um, uh, monument over there, which we'll be looking at a little more later on. And uh, so we'll be taking a closer look at this piazza, but I thought that this was a wonderful way to begin the show. But 
You may remember that we spoke about piazzas. You know, I've always been a lover of piazzas. Now, when you're in Italy and you go to the museums and you go to the churches and you, you have the wonderful meals that, that they have, the incredible food, and you do the shopping and you walk around, one of the things that I really love to do is to spend time on the piazzas. And that is uh, one of them. That is the show I did, show number 43, my favorite piazza is of Florence. That piazza you're looking at is a 19th century view of the Piazza della Signoria in Florence that was taken by the Alinari brothers. And uh, um, so that, that was a show I did that I loved. And I always said from that point on, gee, I'd like to do another show on piazzas. But of course, I, you know, I can't do Florence. So I picked my next, my next favorite place, which is Rome. And this is a show about Rome. Now, Piazzas is uh, a location that people congregate throughout history. And those of you in the Woodstock area are looking at this and saying, well, you know, that's the Village Green. And that's a picture of, uh, of me. I'm on the right. My granddaughter is, is on my right. And uh, continuing in that direction is my daughter, uh, Jennifer, and my son-in-law, Rob. And we were just doing what people do on piazzas in Rome or squares and uh, in village greens all over the country, and that is just sitting on a bench and having a very pleasant afternoon. And that is, you know, what, what goes on. Uh, this is a better look not only at my granddaughter, Sophia, but also at the village green in Woodstock. And not only do people just kind of sit there watching the world go by, which is something I personally love to do on a nice spring or summer's uh, day. That's really, really pleasant. But, you know, the Village Green is also used for events. And I've seen concerts there. I saw there was a, a concert, I think, uh, of two years ago, maybe two years ago. Um, it, it was um, a celebration to Happy Traum, who was given the key to the city, and there was uh, you know, music being played, and John Sebastian was there. And that was one of the final appearances, I believe, of uh, Lee Von Helm, who was also there that afternoon. Um, of course, he passed away. But um, you know, the Village Green is a place where people congregate, and that's what we're going to be focusing on in Rome. Some of the places where people like, and some of the less popular piazzas that are nonetheless very well known. This is, I chose this the first one because this is the first piazza that I ever saw in Rome. Now, the first time I was in Rome was in August of 1992, and we stayed, uh, my ex-wife uh, Wendy and my daughter Jennifer and I stayed in a hotel right down the street from the Piazza Barberini, and this is the first piazza, this is the first place we went. We came out of the hotel and took a right turn and walked about um, perhaps 100 feet, and you come to this piazza, the Piazza Barberini, which is named after the Palazzo Barberini that we'll take a look at in just a moment. But we have a really wonderful picture somewhere in Wendy's house of my daughter standing against this fountain. And this is a very famous fountain. This is the uh, Fontana Tritone, which was sculpted by Bernini uh, during the you know, Baroque era. And this piazza is uh, not one of the really popular piazzas for people to kind of congregate and enjoy. It is more a piazza that serves as a hub of converging streets. And this is a picture of, the, um, uh, of what the piazza looks like, looking at it from, uh, let's see if I can get the direction. You know, I, I don't even know the direction. I think it's, I think it's to, the, to the west, but I'm not totally sure. But there you see the fountain, and what you see mostly when you look at this piazza are cars whizzing around it. And this is a dangerous piazza to cross, as many piazzas in, in, in Rome are. So you have to be very careful. And... Um, this piazza is named after the famous Palazzo Barberini, which was a very famous family in Italy. And they had this magnificent palazzo 
on the Via Quattro Fontane, which was uh, as you came out of our hotel, um, if you if you made a left turn on the on Via Quattro Fontane, you came to this location. This is now an art gallery, uh, a museum that has some really wonderful pieces in it. Not least of which is a is a very famous painting by Raphael. But as you go down that street, you come to, and this is right beyond the Piazza Barberini, you come to the uh, corner that the uh, street, the Via Quattro Fontani is named for. The, the, the name of the street is Quattro Fontani, mean, means four fountains. And this is the street corner where they have the four fountains that the street is named after. And when you get to the street and you continue going in the direction we're looking towards that, that um, sign that's indicating a one-way street, that's the red sign with the white line through it means no entrance. And as, as you continue down that street, and that is the street you go down, at the very end of that street, you go down this, you know, you go down the incline and then you go up on the other side and what you come to, actually this is, um, I wanted to show you this, I should have put it a little earlier in that uh, sequence of pictures, but this is what the piazza looked like in the uh, 19th century, no, actually not 19th century, I think in the very early 20th century, because I do see a car there. This was uh, taken by, this was photographed by the Alinari brothers, who did all those wonderful early pictures of Italy. And it's, it's, a, it's a bad picture, because you see, you know, the Alinari stamp right on the front, and is, it's, it's really not a great picture. I didn't know how to handle it, but I just did want to show you what this piazza looked like uh, much earlier in the 20th century. It was probably much safer to walk through because there weren't quite so many cars. But if you go down that street, um, the Via Sistina, you eventually come to this spot. And this is one of the great spots in all of Rome. And um, I always tell people, when I plan a trip for them to, to Rome, I tell them to start here because this is truly one of the focal points of Rome. It is... One of the really active places, and as you could see, there are like always hundreds of people milling about, not simply because it is, uh, it is a beautiful spot, but also because it's just a place where people like to be. And that is, you know, what occurs in Rome. It's named after these steps. And um, there are 137 steps to get from the piazza to the church of, um, of Trinita al Monte. And uh, it's named after what used to be at the top of those steps, which was uh, the Spanish uh, consulate. So it gives, gives the name, gets the name the Spanish steps. That's an ancient uh, Egyptian obelisk right at the top there. And at the base of the, of the steps is a Bernini fountain. So um, this is what, again, it looks like as we begin our descent down to the piazza. You can see that it's just crawling with people. And um, the street that you see where, you know, straight ahead is a street which has very fashionable stores. So people kind of like to, to window shop in that area. Um, the, the house where uh, Keats um, and Shelley lived, poets, English poets, and the house where Keats actually died is right down there. I think it's the one on the right side. And there's a McDonald's fast food restaurant on the left side. And this is the happening place. This is another view of it from the very top looking down. And this is what it looked like in the 19th century. Again, this is an Alinari photograph of what the Spanish steps looked like <clears throat> over a hundred years ago. And honestly, it doesn't look that different. I mean, you can't really get the true essence of it because the picture's in black and white. But you can see that it's, you know, it's always been a, a place where people congregate. And other than the fact that there are probably um, no cars around, it looks pretty much the same then as it does now. Okay, the next piazza is the Piazza di, di Trevi, which is named after the most famous fountain in all of Rome, the Trevi Fountain. 
The Trevi Fountain was built in the 1700s. It was actually commissioned in the 1600s by Pope Urban VIII, who wanted Bernini to do the, to do the fountain. But um, he passed away, and the project sort of, uh, the Pope passed away, and the project sort of ceased at that point, and it was taken over by a fellow named Alessandro uh, Galilei in 1730, and it was finished during that time. Um, actually, they wanted um, Alessandro Galilei to do it. Clement XII was the Pope who wanted him to do it, but the, by popular demand, the people of Rome wanted the resident sculptor at the time, a fellow named Nicola Salvi, to do it, and he actually uh, began it. It was he died then, and it was finished by a fellow named Giuseppe Panini. And this is one of the most uh, famous spots in Rome. That's what the Trevi Fountain looks like. It's really very, very beautiful. But it is, without a doubt, in my opinion, the most crowded piazza I have ever seen. Um, and, I, you know, I've seen many, many piazzas, and this one is always crowded, whether it's during the day or whether it's at night. And people just like it for a number of reasons. In the summer, it's a very cool spot. It's a place where everybody kind of knows, so um, it's very easy to congregate. Some of the best gelato that I've ever tasted in Rome is uh, on some of those side streets, so it's really a happening place and a very fun place to spend time. This is what it looks like from standing uh, right at the fountain looking at the piazza. You could see that. And people, you know, just look. And this is the fountain, you know, where if you throw a coin over your shoulder, if you, if you, if you put your back to the fountain and then throw a coin over your shoulder, and it varies as to whether it's your left shoulder or your right shoulder. I never was clear on that, but I've tried throwing the coin over both shoulders and making the wish that you will someday return to Rome. And it's worked for me over each shoulder, so it really doesn't matter that much, I suppose. This is a picture of our friend David, who was taken, um, you know, just standing there. You could see that people just kind of stand around. They bring their bicycles and they sit. And this is a typical situation in Rome where people just sit and relax. This is what the Trevi Fountain looked like in the uh, 19th century. So you could see that it pretty much looks the same. Again, it's an Alinari photograph, which has the stamp over there on the lower right-hand side. But it pretty much looks the same. And it was, it was then what it is today, and that is a place for people to congregate. This is another one, the Piazza del Colosio. And um, it's right near the Colosseum which is not really called the Colosseum, believe it or not. It's called the Flavian Amphitheater. You know, any kind of a round building is called an amphitheater, and it was built during the, uh, during the Flavian period, when the Flavians were the emperors of, um, of Rome, I, I believe in the second century AD. And it gets the name, the Colosseum, from a, a colossal statue of Nero, that stood right over there in the front. Uh, so it's called the Colosseum for that reason, and the piazza is known as the Piazza de Colosio. This is what the piazza looks like. This, you know, the piazza really goes all around the Colosseum, so this is just one part of it. This is the part of it that faces the Roman Forum. So you could see all the people milling about, and then you could see there's an incline right behind there which leads to that arch. That is the Arch of Titus, in the Roman Forum. So this is one of the entrances to the Roman Forum. You can go right, right through there and right you know, through the arch into the Forum. On the left side, of course, is the Palatine Hill, and to the right are various monuments. This is a very popular site in this particular piazza. These are uh, Roman people dressed up as Roman gladiators in the red. And people love to come by there and the gladiators will be happy to have your picture taken with them. And they, you know, you're supposed to give them a tip, of course, which everybody does. And you could have your picture taken. 
and they look pretty convincing. And that's the way, I think, what a Roman gladiator probably really did look like. And this is, you know, the Colosseum was the scene of gladiatorial combats among the various, you know, gladiators. And there was a staging area not far from here where they used to train and practice. Okay, so the next piazza is a piazza that I've taken you to before. It's the Campo dei Fiori, which in Italian means a uh, field of flowers. And this is uh, a view of the Campo. Now, I've, you know, as I said, I've, we've been here before, and I won't spend that much time on it, but what you're looking at in the background is one of the most famous restaurants in Rome, La Carbonera, uh, where we've had uh, dinner many, many times. This is what the piazza looks like. That is actually right in the middle, a statue to a fellow named Giordano Bruni, who was a philosopher, but was uh, nailed by the church in the year 1600 for heresy and was burned at the stake at that point. So uh, in later years, a statue was built in his honor and is now a place where people basically sit and relax. There are not too many places uh, to sit if you want to sit in the Campo dei Fiori. You could sit at certainly one of the uh, cafes and restaurants that line it along the left and the right, but if you just want to sit and not have to you know, buy something, that is one of the spots that people do sit. And of course, right off the, the Campo, uh, and a Campo is just another name for a piazza, is the Grotto del Teatro di Pompeo, which is uh, Laura and my favorite restaurant. Now, one of the things about this piazza is that the streets that come off it are all named for various trades. For example, this is the Via dei Chiavari, which is dedicated to the key makers. There's another street that runs right off of it, you know, as spokes on a wheel, called the Via del Giubanari, which, are, which is a street named after the tailors. So every trade are, you know, has a, a street named after of it. There's another view that we looked at earlier. And this is what, this is what occurs. There are, you know, there are people selling flowers right on the piazza, and there are people selling food and other wares right there. This is, this is a market. And I, you know, I couldn't figure out when this market was open because the, the, all the tour books that I read said that it's, it's, it's open from 9 to 1 each day of the week. And other, but we were not here between 9 and 1, so obviously uh, the piazza is probably on some days open all day long. This, I believe, was a Saturday or Sunday morning, so maybe on weekends it's open longer. And they have various foods, the food that they sell. That's an example of one of the stands where you could buy various types of pasta. And people are selling handbags. And there are people just basically sitting at the various restaurants that are on the periphery of the Campo, just kind of enjoying themselves and having a very pleasant afternoon. This is another site that you would see there. There is a fruit stand and another stand. And now we come to the next piazza, which is not far from the Campo dei Fiori, the Piazza Navona, which is built in the form of a, a stadium. And this was the Stadium of Domitian, which was built in the first century AD. And this is one of my favorite piazzas. It is, this is what it looked like in the 19th century. And, you know, it looks, again, pretty much the way it looks today. This is, this is the Fountain of the Four Rivers, which we'll take a closer look at in just a moment. There it is right there. The obelisk is a very famous Egyptian obelisk, and the fountain is a Bernini fountain. There are three fountains in the Piazza Navona. One of them, and that's the most famous, is the one in the center called the Fountain of the Four Rivers. And of course, it's a Bernini fountain. The other two were, were, were sculpted by other um, you know, fountain sculptors. But this is the Bernini fountain. That's a close-up of it. And this is a cool place. I remember the first visit we made to the Piazza Navona in 1992. My daughter Jennifer actually got into this fountain because it was just so unbelievably hot that day that she wanted to cool off and she kind of jumped into the fountain. 
But, you know, this is what it looks like. And you can see that it's kind of shaped in an oval shape as a stadium would be. And this is where um, chariot races took place. As opposed to the Colosseum, which was used for gladiatorial combat, uh, the stadium, the stadia, are uh, places where chariot races took place. And you could see that it's kind of set up for that in, in an elongated manner in the shape of an ellipse. And of course, this is a piazza that has uh, artwork all over and the artist, you could sit for, for your portrait by an artist or you could just hang out by one of the fountains. This is one of the other fountains. I believe this is the fountain at the northern end of the Piazza Navona. And it's a cool place, you know, in the summer. And there are a few benches where people kind of sit and relax. And you could see that there are cafes. There's, um, um, this is a very famous palazzo, the Palazzo Pamfili, which used to be owned by the Pamfili family and is now an art gallery, which is an excellent art gallery. And of course, one of the great things to do along this piazza is to just go into one of those pizzerias and spend the afternoon just kind of, you know, sipping a glass of wine or a glass of water and having a wonderful, uh, one of the wonderful pizzas or pastas that this particular place has. This is what the, um, the Piazza Navona looks like in the early evening. As you can see, it's getting dark. And these, this, is where, this is where Rome really becomes magical in the, in the evening when it, you know, it starts getting dark and it really has this uh, incredible look to it. And the, you know, the, the restaurants start putting out uh, various dishes to entice you to, use, to, to come in and have a seat and uh, enjoy their food. And there they put their menus out uh, as they're competing with other restaurants. That looks like a pretty good restaurant to me. The food looks pretty good there. But in addition to that, the menu looks like it's very extensive. I can't read the prices. It looks also, to me, pretty expensive. And you know an expensive restaurant in, in anywhere in Italy, if the first courses, you could see on the left side, at the lower left side, it says first courses. If those four first courses are above 10 euro, then this is an expensive restaurant. And you can see that most of them are very, very expensive. I even see a, um, a first course that's $20, which is, you know, very, very expensive. I see salads that are also very expensive. So this is not a place that I think I would go to. But nonetheless, you know, when you're sitting there, this is what you get. It's not simply having a meal. It's also being able to enjoy the ambiance um, by, you know, having a very nice, relaxing seat. And they very rarely rush you out, you know. I've, I've never been rushed in a restaurant in Italy. Usually you could take as long as you'd like. This is another well-known piazza. This is the Piazza della Rotonda, which is named after the Pantheon. And the Pantheon is a building that was constructed during the time, it began to be constructed during the time of Augustus, and at the very top, you could see a dedication to Augustus's uh, number one uh, assistant, Marcus Agrippa, who was actually responsible for having built this. And this was added onto during the Middle Ages. And this is the piazza. And it's, uh, that's a, an obelisk, again, another obelisk right there in the middle. When we were doing the Towers of Italy, we spoke about this particular obelisk. And that's what it looks like in the piazza. You get a chance to see one of the great Roman monuments, and you get a chance to also enjoy the ambiance of yet another spot where people gather. And you could see restaurants off to the side, and you know, baby carriages and bicycles. And this is what this is what Italians do on a sunny afternoon, usually on a Sunday. You know, this is the day they have off. Some of them work Saturdays, but most people are off on Sundays, and this is what they do. The locals never, never do this, though. This is for tourists. This is a, a horse-drawn carriage that will take you around Rome. And, of course, there are food stores all around. This happens to be uh, not a restaurant, but a retail food store. Kind of like, um, and you can see all kinds of 
things that they have in there. Another view of it, and this is what the piazza looks like from the steps of the Pantheon. This is a better view of the wide expanse of it. And of course, this is looking in the Pantheon itself with the oculus, which lets the sunlight into the top. And this is what the Pantheon looks like again. I never get tired of this building. It's a very beautiful building. It's probably the best preserved Roman monument in all of Italy. And of course, uh, it's, it, you know, it's called the Pantheon, so it is the, um, the, uh, the burial site of many famous uh, Italians, one of whom is Raphael, the famous artist. It's another view of that, and this is a view looking out towards the piazza from inside the Pantheon. And of course, at night, that's what it looks like. And again, as I said before, Rome gets magical at night, and it's just a wonderful place to walk around. Now, this is one of my favorite piazzas, and it's, uh, it's not very well known. It's called the Piazza Boca della Verita. And Boca della Verita is translated in English as the mouth of truth. And I'll mention what that means in just a moment. But this is a piazza that most people do not hang out at. This is the mouth of truth. And I believe I once explained this on the show. And that is, this was used during the Middle Ages by the magistrates to determine if a person was lying or not. Now, people remember during the Middle Ages were very superstitious. So if somebody told them that if they're lying and they put their hand in that mouth, that they will not pull their hand out in one piece. And people were very superstitious and believed this. And, you know, they brought the person over and they were ready to stick the hand in. And the person would say, oh, no, 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 I've been lying, you know, whatever. So this piazza is named after uh, that particular uh, medieval device for getting, you know, a lie detector test for people during the Middle Ages. And this is what the piazza looks like. It's really quite beautiful, as you could see. I like it because it houses two really wonderful Roman monuments. You can see one of them right over there on the uh, straight ahead. I believe that's called the Temple of Hercules, and you can see the, the uh, trees planted around it. And it's not a very crowded piazza. There's not many cars, there's not many people. That's a close-up view of that temple. That's also extremely well preserved, as you could see. And this is the other uh, temple. This is the Temple of Fortuna Portinus. And, you know, it's a beautiful temple. And this is a good place to see two really wonderful Roman monuments without being crowded by a lot of people. And I love piazzas of that type. That's one of my favorite things to do. This is the Piazza Venezia, which is not known for people congregating, nor is it known for its, its beauty. It's known as the spot where there is a congregation of a lot of streets that, that converge onto some very, very well-known Roman monuments. And uh, we're going to take a look at this piazza in detail. It is actually the beginning of one of the most famous streets in Rome called the Via dei Forti Imperiali, which is the street that has the imperial uh, fora, uh, the, you know, the Forum of Trajan and uh, the Forum of Peace and several of the other forums that line that. And it connects this piazza right over here, which is the Piazza Venezia, named after the Palazzo. And from this window right here, let me point to it. See this window right here? It's like a balcony. That's where Mussolini used to make his speeches. And I'll, you know, I'll tell you the whole history of it. He had this street built from the Colosseum to this palazzo. And what he did was he got into his open car, excuse me, he got into his open car at the Colosseum and rode very slowly with throngs of people cheering him along the way to the palazzo where he then you know, went up to that balcony and made his famous speeches. And this is a picture of me on that street that is now, it used to be 
uh, for cars. It is now for pedestrians only. And this is one of the monuments that is on the Piazza Venezia. This is the monument to Victor Emmanuel, who was one of the people who's given credit for unifying Italy, going from city-states to a republic. And this is the statue of Victor Emmanuel, which the people in Rome uh, derisively call uh, the large wedding cake or the large typewriter because it's just such an eyesore. This is a, a close-up of, of what it looks like. I kind of like it. I mean, I've been to the top of it, and it's a great place to see the piazza. And that's what it looks like from standing at the top of the Victor Emmanuel monument looking down at the piazza. So if for nothing else, it gives you a good view. And that's, of course, the Palazzo Venezia. That's another view of it. And yet another view from the opposite side with the Palazzo on the left side. It's, you know, it's not an ugly piazza. It's, uh, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's nice, but it gets, you know, it gets very trafficy, and it's very difficult, you know, to cross the street, so it gets difficult in that sense. This is uh, an early view of it. I don't know from what uh, time period that was. And this is what it looks like with throngs of people. I don't know if this was the actual time that Mussolini was making one of his addresses, but this is what it looks like when there are large congregations of people. It certainly looks like there's somebody standing up there making a speech, and I'm not exactly sure I took this off the internet. The Campidoglio. The Campidoglio is uh, a wonderful piazza that is built right on the spot which used to be the ancient capital of Rome. And it was designed by Michelangelo in the 16th century. And it's quite beautiful. And you walk up these steps, these incredible steps, to get to the top. And there are three buildings. The Senate building is straight ahead. The Capitoline Museum is on the left. And uh, uh, I believe something called the Palazzo Nuovo is on the right side. Both of, the, both of those buildings on the left and the right are now museums. And this was the, um, a sketch of it during the Middle Ages. This is what it was supposed to have looked like, and it wound up, indeed, looking that way, as you could see. Designed by Michelangelo as a Renaissance piazza, you know, very well balanced and symmetrical. And this is a 19th century view of it, which is obviously overexposed. I'm sorry about that, but um, this is what it, you know, looked like when taken during the 19th century. The Piazza Repubblica. Okay, so this piazza um, is right on the spot where the uh, Via Nazionale begins. That fountain in the middle was commissioned by Pope Pius IX the, um, the in 1870, and it was uh, sculpted by Alessandro Guerrieri. And um, this is uh, a piazza that's right near the church of Santa Maria degli Angeli, which was uh, originally a Roman monument. I believe it was the Baths of Diocletian that Michelangelo turned into a church during the Middle Ages. And this is what the piazza looks like. Again, it can be quite dangerous because there's cars whizzing around it, but it's, it's kind of pretty, and people do walk around it. And you can see there's an arcade over there underneath that building. And I actually have the person who did the, or the arcade, a fellow named Gaetano Scott. And this is what it looks like. And, you know, I don't come into this piazza that often except to get to my, the hotel where we stay in, which is not far from this. The piazza to the hotel is maybe three blocks. The hotel is south of this, the Hotel Adler. And, of course, this is what it looks like at night. And as you could see, you know, during the day and at night, Rome does indeed get very magical at this time. And that's what the portico looks like that goes around it. And it's also known because there is a McDonald's. If you, know, if you feel like eating a hamburger and French fries and you're tired of the Italian food, if that came along, you could eat here at McDonald's. 
The Piazza dei Cinquecento is um, probably one of the most crowded and one of the most unattractive piazzas. It is the piazza that uh, has the train station right on it. And there's the train station, and everybody comes in here who's taking a train either into Rome or out of Rome, and you could see that it's the hub of a lot of activity. And as you can see in the background, this is where all the buses converge that go all over Rome, and they all converge right here at the train station. And what am I looking at here? This is just another view of it from a different direction. And that's another view. I think that's the same thing with the buses. The Piazza Minerva. The Piazza Minerva is um, a, a piazza that is more known for two things. One is the famous statue that you see right there of the elephant with the obelisk on top of it. And that, that is a, an elephant that was sculpted by Bernini, who did, as you know, many of the monuments throughout, um, throughout Rome. The building you see in the background, you see this building right in the middle here? That's the Pantheon. So that's where we were earlier in the Piazza Rotunda. Most people hang out there, so not too many people hang out here. But if you walk down this street right over here and come right into this piazza, you come to a church that is extremely well known. And this is the church. It's the church of Santa Maria Sopra Minerva, which literally means the church that was built over uh, Minerva, the the uh, the Temple Minerva, which was an ancient Roman monument, and the church is built right over it. And that's what it looked like in the 19th century, as taken by the Alinari brothers, with the Hotel Minerva over there on the right side, and the same obelisk with the same statue. And that's what the statue now looks like. There's the elephant with the obelisk on top, it's a beautiful church, and it is known for this sculpture. This is a sculpture by Michelangelo by the name of Christ Bearing the Cross. And very few people really stop to look at this because they don't know what it is. And I've seen literally hundreds of people walk past this, and if they had known that this was a Michelangelo or piece of work, they would definitely stop. And that, of course, has, I've showed this before, shown this before, you know, the, the genitalia of, of, of the statue are covered, and I don't know why, because that's the only time I've ever seen that um, in Italy, Michelangelo sculpture. And of course, this, is, this church is also well known because it has the grave, the tomb of Fra Angelico, one of the great uh, artists of the 15th century. The Piazza Colonna is a little known piazza. It has a, an obelisk right there in the middle, as you could see. It's a nice piazza, and that's what it looks like in the evening. And it's, you know, kind of nice to hang out there, although not too many people do, because it's actually in close proximity to other well-known piazzas, such as the Piazza Navona and the Campo dei Fiori. This is what it looked like during the uh, 19th century. And that's what it looks like today. And now we come to St. Peter's Square, which is, of course, the location of St. Peter's Cathedral, which is the, probably the most famous church uh, in the world. And, and this is a piazza that is so huge that no matter how many people are in it, it never looks crowded except on rare occasions. And that's, of course, what the church looks like. And everybody is really there for the church. You know, people come to that piazza not to congregate and kind of socialize, but to, to go to this church and to go to the Vatican Museums, which, is, which are located right behind it. This is what it looks like with a few more people in the piazza. And this is what it looks like when the piazza is jammed with people. This is a picture that was taken recently when they were choosing a new pope. And that is where people kind of wait to find out 
who the new pope is going to be, they all congregate in the Piazza San Pietro. And that's what it looked like when the people were waiting. People are so dedicated and devoted to finding out who the next pope is that they go there no matter what the weather is. And of course you could see that it was raining at that particular time. The Cortile Belvedere. The Cortile Belvedere is a very famous um, Cortile, which is, you know, a court. It was designed by Bramante um, at the behest of Julius II, and it connects two very important buildings. It connects um, St. Peter's Cathedral on the right side, and it connects the Palazzo Belvedere on the left side. And the Palazzo Belvedere is where the popes lived. It is now the site of the entrance to the museum of the, um, of the Vatican. And inside that museum are some really famous works. This is the Apollo Belvedere. And this is um, the Laocoon, which was founded uh, right at the time that Michelangelo was in Rome speaking with Julius II about one of his commissions. And this is, and all of these sculptures that wound up in the museum are all from Julius's personal collection. It used to be one long court, courtyard, but it's now divided into two parts, one of which is a parking lot for people who work at the Vatican, and the other is, you know, for people who just want to take pictures and have a relaxing afternoon. You can see that people do sit on benches along the side there. This is uh, a pine cone from ancient times. It's a, it's a first century Roman bronze uh, known as pina, which is the Italian word for pine cone. And that's another view of it. And I think we're kind of running down, so I have to kind of move a little faster at this point. This is Largo, Argentina which is named after uh, the city of Strasbourg, which has a Roman name of Argentor, Argentoratum. And um, the reason it's named after the city of Strasbourg is because the Pope, the Pope's master of ceremonies in the year 1503 came from Strasbourg, so they named this after him. It's, it's, an, inter, it's an intersection of many trams and bus lines that intersect, but it's really known mostly for this archaeological site, which has four Roman temples. And right near this site is the spot where Julius Caesar was assassinated. And this is a really nice spot. You get to see an ongoing excavation. And it's also known as being a cat sanctuary. So, you know, stray cats always wind up here, and people go down there to feed them and to care for them. The Piazza San Pietro in Vincoli, which is pretty much of a deserted piazza, <clears throat> and it's known mainly for the church. You can see the church right over there, the church of San Pietro in Vincoli, which is known mostly as the burial place of Julius II, and one of the sculptures of the, I, you know, I forgot how many sculptures were supposed to go around Julius's tomb, but there was supposed to be a lot of sculptures. Michelangelo was supposed to do all of them, and his tomb was, and the tomb of Julius II was supposed to be right in St. Peter's. This is one of the sculptures, one of the most famous of Michelangelo's sculptures. This is the one of Moses that is in the, uh, in the church. So people go to the church mainly to see this statue and the other two statues of Leah and Rachel and also uh, purportedly are the chains that brought St. Peter's to Rome and they're under this glass um, at the very uh, bottom of the altar. The Piazza della Maddalena is a piazza that I like. I've only been there once but you could see it's a very quiet piazza with restaurants around it and it's named, uh, so that, that this is another view of it, it's named after that church, the Church of Santa Maria Maddalena, and it's right near the, um, the synagogue of Rome. It's 
kind of a quiet place, but, you know, kind of fun to hang around. This is another piazza that's not far from that one called the Piazza Monte Savello, which is right on, right on the Tiber. And uh, that's the synagogue in Rome, which is not far from that piazza. And that's, you know, we happened to start at point B, which was the synagogue, and we walked to the piazza along that particular route that I show you right there. And that's how we came upon that piazza. It has beautiful views of the Tiber, as you could see. The Piazza del Popolo, which is the Piazza of the People, is at the very end of a very famous street called the Via del Corso, which used to be, uh, in Roman times, the Via, Via Lata, which you know came into Rome from the north. I haven't spent very much time here, but it's named, uh, it's named after the people, and there are beautiful churches around the periphery. This is the 19th century view of it. And that's it. That brings us to the end. Our next show is going to be a show on the arches of Italy, and I will go all over Italy and talk about some of my favorite arches and talk a little bit about the history of arches in Italy. But as far as tonight is concerned, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. And I hope to see you again next week. Buona notte e buona fortuna. Thank you.